Hello guys, Ancient Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. As for this video, we have a new GPU comparison, this time the RTX 4070 Ti Super, that's a long name, versus the RX 7900 XT. And you guys voted to kind of put in between these two cards, the RX 7900 GRE. Today's video is the RX 7900 GRE versus the RX 7900 XT versus the RTX 4070 Ti Super. And by the way, I want to thank AMD for sending this massive RX 7900 XT and want to thank Nvidia as well for sending the RTX 4070 Ti Super. So once again, thank you to both brands. And in case you're new to the channel and this is actually the first video that you're watching on my channel, well, I can tell you right away that we have several videos like this one. For example, the previous ones of the RX 7900 XTX versus the RTX 4080 Super and the one with the RX 7800 XT versus the 7900 GRE versus the RTX 4070 Super. And this one answers another question this time, RTX 4070 Ti Super, which is basically a 4070 Ti with 256-bit buzz and 16GB VRAM versus the RX 7900 XT. So let's start with the pricing. On US we can get the RTX 4070 Ti Super for as low as $799 with the 7900 XT going as low as $699, so $100 below the 4070 Ti Super, and then we have the GRE, which is obviously less expensive, at $549. As for the European prices, we have the RTX 4070 Ti Super at €855, Euros, which is kind of normal in Europe since we already have the taxes on the final price, the 7900 XT at 729 euros, which is actually just a bit over the, the US price, which is not that bad at all, and the GRE at 575 euros. And with this all set, should you go to the NVIDIA card now with 16GB VRAM and more features like the LSS frame generation, a better upscaler so far, and well, ray reconstruction and so on, or should you go to the full raw power or full brute force RX 7900 XT? Well, Let's find out. But before, let's find out today's sponsor. Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall. Bringing you lots of software deals like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2019 or 2021 with a new Windows 11 design. And for all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 30% off, getting a Windows 11 serial key for $22 and a Windows 10 one for only $15. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. So, Benchmarks. As always, we start with Plague Tale Requiem. At 1080p, we can see in the previous side-by-side -side comparison that the RX 7900 XT consumes a lot more power at lower resolutions compared to the 4070 Ti Super. But it is also faster, with the GRE not being far behind. At 1440p, the load goes more to the GPU side and the RX 7900 GRE starts getting close to the RTX 4070 Ti Super, with the RX 7900 XT being 14% faster. And at 4K, even the RX 7900 GRE that costs at least 200 bucks less than the RTX 4070 Ti Super, of course, manages to deliver very close results, with the RX 7900 XT being 25% faster than the GRE and 16% faster than the RTX 4070 Ti Super. Thank you. 
Assassin's Creed Mirage, as most of you know, is a game where AMD GPUs absolutely need smart access memory to perform well, as they would be much slower than the Nvidia card without it. At 1440p, we are maintaining the scaling, with the RX 7900 XT being slightly faster than the RTX 4070 Ti Super, but delivering lower 1% lows and consuming more power. And the only thing that really changes at 4K is the 1% lows, or are the 1% lows, that are now equal on both cards, with even the RX 7900 GRE delivering pretty good results. Cyberpunk 2077 is a game that performs quite well on AMD cards if we take off ray tracing, especially on the RDNA 3 ones, and that's why you see the RTX 4070 Ti Super being only 5% faster than the RX 7900 GRE, even at 1080p, which is quite odd. As the resolution goes up, the Nvidia, starts, the Nvidia card starts losing more ground, with the RX 7900 XT being considerably faster here, and that 4K is where we get the biggest difference, with the RX 7900 GRE being virtually on par with the RTX 4070 Ti Super and the RX 7900 XT being around 22% faster than both, delivering 75 FPS. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, like the other COD games, is well known to benefit the AMD GPUs over the NVIDIA ones, and in here the NVIDIA GPU isn't even a match for the RX 7900 GRE, not even at 1080p, which is something that definitely does not change at 1440p, where the RX 7900 XT is 37% faster than the RTX 4070 Ti Super, which is crazy. And going to 4K, the RTX 4070 Ti Super still delivers an OK performance, a little below the 90 average FPS mark, but still considerably slower than the other AMD cards for sure. And another interesting scenario we have is with Forza Horizon 5, where the RX 7900 GRE is once again, but this time at 1080p as well, on par with the much more expensive RTX 4070 Ti Super. At 1440p the results are still all very close for all cards, which is kind of odd, and even moving to 4K makes no difference, with the RX 7900 GRE being virtually on par with the RTX 4070 Ti Super and the RX 7900 XT not being much faster than the other two cards. Hogwarts Legacy is one of those games that loves raw power, and this is usually why the AMD cards tend to perform better, but at 1080p we're kind of CPU bottlenecked in most cases, so as we move to 1440p we can get a better picture of what the performance really is, with the RX 7900 GRE being once again faster than the RTX 4070 Ti Super, which is sincerely quite odd. Something that still applies at 4K, where the GRE and the 4070 Ti Super are even and the RX 7900 XT is a bit faster. Somehow losing performance now at 4K with smart access memory enabled, which doesn't really make much sense. As for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, it seems like it loves Ada Lovelace GPUs, and it is possibly due to the increased L2 cache versus the previous generations. And yet, at 1440p where the CPU bottleneck isn't there anymore, we see one more time the RX 7900 GRE being on par with the RTX 4070 Ti Super, which is an exceptional result considering it costs at least 200 bucks less. And at 4K things get maintained with the RX 7900 XT being 17% faster than the RX 7900 GRE and 20% faster than the RTX 4070 Ti Super. Alan Wake 2 is more or less like Cyberpunk, where even though the game is packed with NVIDIA features like frame generation and ray reconstruction, when we go raw, the AMD cards perform quite better, in this case with the GRE being once again on par with the RTX 4070 Ti Super. Although as opposed to Cyberpunk, the higher the resolution gets, the more ground the RTX 4070 Ti Super gets as well 
which is something that goes against the results that we usually see, with the RX 7900 XT still being 13% faster here. As we go to 4K, the RTX 4070 Ti Super is as close to the RX 7900 XT as the RX 7900 GRE is close to it, with the advantage of the NVIDIA card being the lower power draw and the better upscaler, of course. As we move to Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, that has some kind of ray tracing always enabled, the RTX 4070 Ti Super finally shows its superiority. Although the difference isn't as big as we saw with the RTX 4080 Super versus the RX 7900 XTX. At 1440p, the RX 7900 XT is still performing much better than I thought, delivering only 6 FPS less than the RTX 4070 Ti Super, that is here 28% faster than the RX 7900 GRE as it always should. At 4K, the RX 7900 XT catches up, only delivering 1 FPS less, with both cards delivering basically 60 average FPS at 4K native high settings, which is actually quite awesome. Moving to Starfield, where the RTX 4080 Super did a good job versus the RX 7900 XTX, the RX 7900 XT inverts the roles, being slightly faster than the RTX 4070 Ti Super at 1080p, but as we go to 1440p, the RX 7900 XT is now the fastest card, but once again not by much, while consuming more power as well, and it is kind of 4K where the differences are once again really small, which is odd, with the RX 7900 XT delivering 5 FPS over the RTX 4070 Ti Super, which is something small in real-world scenario. The Last of Us, like Forza Horizon 5 and Assassin's Creed Mirage, is another game where the AMD GPUs would be destroyed if it wasn't for smart access memory delivering massive performance gains. Something that stays at 1440p, where the RX 7900 XT is now 16% faster than the RTX 4070 Ti Super, that is only 5% faster than the way less expensive RX 7900 GRE. At 4K, the 7900 XT is, well, the only card showing a good advantage as it delivers 75 FPS, being 13% faster than the RTX 4070 Ti Super and delivering a much smoother experience. And now we get Robocop Rock City, which is a new addition to our GPU benchmarks. And even with Unreal Engine 5, we get the RX 7900 GRE performing once again on par with a much more expensive RTX 4070 Ti Super. And we're talking about a recent title. At 1440p, the NVIDIA card is now slightly faster, but still slower than the RX 7900 XT, that is 12% faster. Difference that gets even smaller when we go to 4K, where the RTX 4070 Ti Super is now considerably faster than the RX 7900 GRE, as it should always be, and only slightly slower than the RX 7900 XT. Very decent results, actually. And these results leads us to the average FPS, where the RX 7900 XT is the fastest card. In this case, 11% at 1080p, 13% at 1440p, and also 13% at 4K. Which is not that much better in terms of sole performance, let's say, especially since the RTX 4070 Ti consumes less power and has more features and better upscaler, but still, the RX 7900 XT usually costs 100 bucks less, with more VRAM being the only major downside of the ray tracing performance, I would say. And talking about ray tracing, let's see how these cards handle it. We're not from here either. Silantius left us up here a year ago. The first ray tracing game, as always, is Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition. And here we have always interesting results. First of all, I thought the RTX 4070 Ti Super would be much faster here, which is clearly not the case, and at the same time, even though it is indeed considerably faster, it delivers lower 1% lows. And I could definitely notice a smoother gameplay with the, MB with the MD cards when testing, sorry. Still, the Nvidia card is 16% faster at 1080p, 20% faster at 1440p, and 25% faster at 4K. As we go to Cyberpunk 2077, things kind of shift and the RTX 4070 Ti Super is now MUCH faster than the RX 7900 XT, in this case 33% natively and 30% with upscaling. 
At 1440p the difference is quite big as well, with the Nvidia card being 25% faster natively and 28% faster with upscaling. Meaning that as the resolution went up, the MD cards actually got a bit more ground. Which is not usual, but still quite interesting. And now we have Resident Evil 4, which is one game that delivers a very light ray tracing implementation. Here we can see that even though the RX 7900 XT is faster without ray tracing, it gets on par with the RTX 4070 Ti Super when enabling it, which was kind of expected. What I did not expect was that the RX 7900 XT would be faster at higher resolutions, even with ray tracing enabled, as even at 1440p ultra wide, it is still faster than the NVIDIA counterpart. I mean, even the GRE is delivering basically 100 FPS with ray tracing in this part, which is an awesome result. With Spider-Man Remastered we start at 1440p, as this game's ray tracing implementation is highly CPU driven. And as can be seen, all the results look more or less the same, and it is only when we go to 4K that the differences start appearing, with the RX 7900 GRE being considerably slower, but to my surprise, the RX 7900 XT handled, it, handled its own actually pretty well, delivering more FPS than the RTX 4070 Ti Super, even with ray tracing enabled. Very, very nice actually. And to finalize the ray tracing benchmarks, we have Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. At 1080p, we see the RTX 4070 Ti Super spanking both AMD cards in terms of averages that are 27% above compared to the RX 7900 XT, but especially in the 1% lows that are basically double the ones on the AMD side. And that's massive! At 1440p the differences are still there, with the RX 7900 XT still having issues with the 1% lows somehow, and the RTX 4070 Ti Super being slower in rasterization, but 23% faster in ray tracing, than the RX 7900 XT of course. Still considering it costs more and the Nvidia has better ray tracing, I thought the differences would be bigger in this scenario. And to finalize the benchmarks we have the upscaling results, especially to know how XCSS works in several cards, as the Intel ones are still kind of lower tier. But it does seem that XCSS works better on the Nvidia cards compared to the AMD ones, as even here, XCSS delivers more FPS on the RTX 4070 Ti Super, while the LSS delivers less versus FSR on the RX 7900 XT which is, well, odd, but maybe because Nvidia has the dedicated, the tensor cores dedicated to upscaling and so on, maybe that's the reason, I don't really know, but I guess it is. And that gets shown even more with Spider-Man Remastered, as XCSS runs quite well with the RTX 4070 Ti Super, while it actually runs slower than native on the RX 7900 XT. Somehow, don't really ask me why and barely faster than native on the RX 7900 GRE. And with this said, FSR 3.1 can't come fast enough for AMD users, and I really hope AMD starts giving you the option of updates versions, updated versions I mean, through the LL files, like Nvidia and Intel do. Because according to them, that will be a thing very soon, which is actually great for every single gamer out there. And with this all said and done, let's move to the conclusion. And well guys, concluding, 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 well, we have some interesting results. The results that actually made me go WOW for quite some time were the 7900 GRE results. The GRE results compared to the RTX 4070 Ti Super that I thought was much faster in terms of rasterization. And if we look at pricing only, for $549 you can get a card that gets really close in terms of rasterization uh, compared to the 4070 Ti Super. You get a, a card, let's say, $200, $250 less expensive that performs like 95, 90 to 95% of what the most expensive car does. Of course, it consumes a bit more power because even the Pulse version will consume overclocked 290 watts, while this card's power limit, the, R the RTX 4070 Ti Super, goes up to 270 watts, so, or sometimes a bit more. So in terms of power draw, the difference is really, really low, but at the same time, it costs much, much less. And in terms of rasterization, once again, it has the same VRAM capacity. And in terms of rasterization, it performs really, 
really close to the 4070 Ti Super. Once again, costing 200 or 250 bucks less. That's a lot. Now, in between the 7900 XT and the RTX 4070 Ti Super, which card would I get? It is, it is really, really a, a tough, tough choice. choice. Because the 7900 XT is a 20GB card, 320-bit buzz. In terms of rasterization, it is faster than the RTX 4070 Ti Super and it is 100 bucks less. And unless you're playing some really specific games in terms of rate racing, like once again Cyberpunk 2077, the 7900 XT can still do a very decent job in terms of ray tracing. And if you use a bit of upscaling well, it will be more than fine and you won't really need to worry much about it. Of course, if you want path tracing, the Nvidia card would be better, but at the same time, if you really want path tracing, I advise you to get at least a 4080 Super, at least 4080 Super or 4090. Anything below that won't really run path racing that well, even with upscaling. So it's kind of a balance. If you want a cheaper car that performs better overall and will most likely perform better across the time, you want the 7900 XT. Even more now that AMD announced FSR 3.1 and it will start coming to many games, being the first game Ratchet and Clank, and it is just much better than FSR 2.2 in terms of upscaling. And since they decoupled frame generation and they bring other things, like for example, according to AMD, the newest FSR implementation will allow you to just update the FSR version like we do on the NVIDIA side, Honda and Intel side, you just go there, download the new DLLs, update it on the game files and you now have the newer upscaler. So it's a win-win situation if you are able or if you are willing to wait a bit, the 7900 XT will be the best choice. If you really, really want things right now, if you really want the best right now and you don't mind paying a bit of an extra, let's say that, and of course having way, way lower power consumption, if those things are crucial for you, power consumption and features now, then the 4070 Ti Super is the card for you. If not, just pick the 7900 XT, which is an excellent price performance card. And well guys, that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video if you enjoyed it. And leave your comment in the comment section and really let me know what you think about these cards. Let me know what you think about the comparison and the games that were tested since I also added uh, Robocop Rock City. And as soon as Hellblade 2 kicks in or maybe Ghost of Tsushima, I will add those games as well because I really want to do more benchmarks. And really, uh, also another thing, more GPU benchmarks will come as soon as the Ryzen 8000 series just kick in as well. The CPUs, not the APUs, or in this case, the CPUs are the 9000 series, sorry. As soon as I get one of those, I will also start retesting the GPUs and will also include productivity tasks and not only gaming. So we'll have almost likely just productivity first and then the gaming benchmarks because, well, I, I, I really like what I do and I want to keep improving time after time after time. So once again, leave your comment in the comment section and give me some criticism if you want and let me know what card would you pick in my case. Thank you very much and see you in the next video, guys. Cheers.